Now let's go over to Donut Land. Donut Land we can think of as the class that contains the code that will use the blueprint to make an instance of a donut. The technical term that we use in Java ah, the technical term we use in Java is really cool. Instantiate. What is an instance? Tell me about this word, instance. Situation. Getting there? An event. An event, maybe? Moment. Moment. Occurrence. An occurrence. I like that. An occurrence of something. So, uh, We've got two car people in the back. So we might say there is, what's that fancy car, Bugatti? Yeah. Haven't you shown me a Bugatti? Yeah. Okay, so Bugatti exists as an idea of a car. How many Bugattis have been made? More than one? Yeah. So for example, Nick might say, that is an instance of a Bugatti, and there is another instance of a Bugatti over there. They're both what? Bugattis, but we have two instances of it. In our case, we could think about it like this. There is a Bugatti blueprint that was used to make each instance of that car. We have a donut blueprint. We will use that donut blueprint every time we make an instance of a donut. And we're going to do that right now in donut land. We're going to make a method. Oh, ah, not working well. Uh, we're going to make a method main only in donut land. Our blueprint isn't a program. It's just a blueprint for making donuts. It's not a standalone program. Donut land is what we're used to. So we can say public static void main. It accepts a string array. So what's important is that these classes are in the same package because the Java virtual or the Java precompiler when we ask it to make an object, it will say, well, they want an instance of this object. I need a blueprint to make it. The default place that it will look for that blueprint is in the, uh, its own package. So we're going to ask the compiler when it starts running our program to make us a donut object. I'm going to write, um, we need to think about uh, let's, let's do a sample. So we said, if we wanted to make a regular old variable, we would say something like int age equals 20. 20. What's the structure of this declaration? This is the type. 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 This is the, name. the name of the variable, and this is the value. value. Okay, we're now going to do the same structure, the same order, except we're going to do it with objects. Just like integer is a data type, by making a blueprint, we are defining our very own data type. Meaning we're going to make a variable that can only store donuts. Because Java is a strongly typed language. So it's going to look like this. It's going to look weird. Hold on to your pants. So we're going to make an object, a donut object. We're going to name it first donut. And this on the right hand side is what we're going to assign to our variable donut. So it's going to be new donut. And then this is important. There is a, this is the, uh, the syntax for asking the Java compiler to go find me a class called donut and I want you to use that blueprint to construct that donut object and stick it in memory. Okay? The reason, this looks like a what, if I forget the new. This looks like what that we've written before. Method call. A method call. It looks just like a method call. And in fact, it is. It's a method call to what's called the constructor method. It's an invisible method that lives in every object that is called when we create an instance of that object. So just like we've done a hundred times before, how do we interpret this assignment statement? We start on the 
We start on the right and then swinging. We start on the right. This. I feel like I should be teaching physics. You can do the pendulum swings and all that. Um, I'm going to do this this summer. My plan is just to, to read a physics book from start to finish, a college physics book. I love physics. Okay, so we're making a brand new donut, and then this is going to be a little bit subtle. You got to stick with me. We somehow need to refer to this nice donut that we just made. We have to figure out how to get to it. So we can imagine this. There's the invisible little constructors inside the computer. They go grab your blueprint whenever they see the keyword new. They, they bang it all together. I guess in this case, they get the flour and the blah, 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 and they put it in the oven. And then they come out with a brand new donut. Where does data live in the computer when we're running in a program? Where would this data get stored? In the hard drive or the RAM? Yeah, while well, we're working with it. Yeah, it gets stored in the RAM. And on the RAM, there is a structure in Java called the heap. It's a heap of data. So what's going on is we, the compiler makes a donut, and it says, OK, this person wants a donut. That means that on this donut object, I will make that requester a variable whose name is what? Percent remaining. We've seen this before. Percent remaining, and it's of type what? Int. Int. And because it's a blueprint, I'm just going to march down the list of requirements. Hi, Tyler. <laughs> Donut day. Yeah. Uh, it will march down the list of our blueprint, and it will say, what else does my donut need? What else is in my donut blueprint? What's in donut? Percent remaining, texture. So it's going to go, let's see if I can get it lined up again. Yeah. OK, good. It's going to have a variable on here called texture of type what? String. String. Great. And so forth. All right. Now, this is a little bit subtle. So we have these variables that are on each donut, meaning every donut has a percent remaining, every donut has a texture. But I just made a particular donut. I made a single instance of a donut. And I call that single instance what? First donut. First donut. So what's going on is we do not store donut objects in first donut. What we are storing is the location of the donut that I just made and it was put on the heap. You can think of a heap as a big stack of Java objects that were created by the user. So when you're doing your initial things, you had a scanner object running around. We're going to have a donut object running around. There always has been a system object running around. And when we say new donut, we get a new donut object thrown on the, the heap. But we have to be able to find it in this mess somehow. Uh, the heap is organized by IDs, so you can think of this would be considered like object 12 and 87. They have kind of crazy numbers, 63, 42, 91. So if the donut object that I just made is sitting here on the heap, what I'm actually storing in the variable first donut is this location of the donut object. So it's a lot easier for us to program by remembering a name like first donut than remembering 91 because in reality it's a whole address. It's like 916432H4 whatever. It's a big long address and that's what's stored in here. So what we can think about is this. Here's our heap. So first donut is a pointer to wherever the object is that I just made with the keyword new. How many donuts do I get with one keyword new? One. One. I have made one new donut. New will always give you one new object. 